Natalie Sidesurf here, Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm gonna show you how I made a selfie cake. I'm making this selfie cake because so many of you have asked me to make it. You asked me in the comments on my videos, you asked me on my social media, and a lot of you even asked me if I'm a cake when I post real photos of myself. <laughs> if you like this video, please like this video below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now because Halloween is coming and we have some fun plans for cake. So let's get started. For this selfie cake, I decided to make the entire head out of cake and the neck out of chocolate. So here I made a custom cake board of the neck and the chin that's going to hold up my cake head. I'm stacking layers of yellow cake and bright green vanilla buttercream because that's what my brains are made of. <laughs> Once the cake is stacked, I carve the cake in the basic shape of my head. <laughs> Don't worry about the facial features just yet, details will come later. So what I'm really shooting for here is a faceless mannequin cake that I can use as a blank canvas. Now that the cake is carved, I crumb coat the cake in a thin layer of buttercream. I know this head is looking a little large, and that's because the top and the sides will also include my hair. So don't think of this cake just as my bald head, but my bald head plus a layer of hair over top. <laughs> Next, I sprinkle a bit of cornstarch on a nonstick mat, and I bust out the modeling chocolate. So cornstarch helps keep the modeling chocolate from sticking to everything. Modeling chocolate tastes like whatever brand of chocolate you use in the recipe. I'll post a link in the description of my modeling chocolate tutorial so you can make some. It's super fun stuff. The chocolate is rolled out, so now I'm picking it up, placing it on top, and I'm working the chocolate into the shape of my cake head. I gather and pinch the chocolate in some areas and I just trim it away with scissors. It's okay if this layer is a little Frankenstein because I'll blend everything out later. You just wanna get the cake covered because modeling chocolate will seal in the moisture and keep your cake from drying out while you're working on it. Let's work on my face. <laughs> So if you're familiar with my cakes, then you know I cover pretty much all of my cakes in modeling chocolate rather than fondant. And this cake is a great example of why. So to sculpt all my facial features, I'm blending small chunks of softened modeling chocolate onto the cake. I'm not going to say that sculpting the face in this way with fondant is impossible, but it would be extremely difficult. Modeling chocolate is pretty much edible clay. So it's a great option for sculpting specific facial proportions and super tiny details. So while I sculpt my face, I think this is a great time to tell you all a little bit about me and my relationship with bust cakes. <laughs> so I have a bachelor's degree in fine art and I've always treated cake as I would any traditional art media. And that's the reason that I came up with the idea of making my first realistic bust cake back in February 2013. It was of singer Willie Nelson. So that cake ended up being the most important cake of my life. Because my brother, who lives in Tokyo by the way, posted a picture of my Willie Nelson cake on Reddit where it reached the number one submission on the front page. I think the reason it got so much attention was because back in 2013, people hadn't really seen a realistic bus cake before. In fact, before I made the Willie Nelson cake, I searched and I searched and I searched for examples of realistic bus cakes, and I couldn't find any. So the cake was featured in media all over the world, and the attention that it got was the main reason why I started Side Surf Cake Studio. Basically, it made me realize that my realistic cakes are something that people really like. And to this day, seven and a half years later, I still experiment, I still learn new skills, and I still challenge myself to see just how realistic I can make my cakes. So you can see in the background that I have images of myself from the front, three quarter, and my profile. And there's a few other angles. I'm not sculpting myself from memory. 
for sure. I'm sculpting what I see in the pictures. So these reference images are key. They're super important. That's a great reason why sculpting a self-portrait is a great way to practice. I can easily take all those photos ahead of time and I don't have to worry about, you know, stalking a specific person online and trying to gather images of them from every single angle, like a weirdo. <laughs> Been there. A lot, I've done that a lot. <laughs> I've made a lot of sculpted cakes. Bus cakes are my favorite cake to make because they're so challenging. They are by far the most difficult cake to sculpt. A six foot horse cake is easier than this 15 inch tall bust cake. <laughs> That's because capturing the likeness of a person is extremely difficult. Not to mention I'm working with edible materials that are temperature sensitive and the cake needs to be super fresh and delicious so I only have a few days to sculpt and paint the entire thing. Artists who work with, you know, typical sculpting materials, they can take their time with it. They may spend weeks or months or even years on just one sculpture. Me, I have about 30 hours over just a few days to make it happen. I mean, I chose this profession. I do love it. For my hair, I'm using modeling chocolate. I don't just plop a rolled out layer of modeling chocolate onto my cake head and call it a day. Hair has volume, so I add hair in sections and I make sure to bulk some areas up so it doesn't just look like I took a dip in a pool and my hair is slicked down to the sides of my head all flat. I also sculpt a variety of lines to create some depth. So some of the lines are gonna be deeper and then some are soft and feathered marks. I have a love-hate relationship with sculpting the hair. <laughs> It makes the cake look so much better, but it takes a really long time to sculpt. So many lines. It's starting to look more like me now. <laughs> so it's funny because bus cakes go through these phases where they look like disturbing and awkward, and then areas start to form and you can kind of see the person, like here. I mean, I could use some ears, <laughs> some hair. <laughs> bus cakes are the best. You know what? I have always thought it would be really fun to make a bus cake of a YouTuber that they could react to. Right? <laughs> Who could I make? Is there a YouTuber that you'd like to see me making cake? You should let them know. <laughs> Go tell them! Say, Side Surf Cake Studio wants to make you a cake. <laughs> I'd say this entire cake took me about 40 hours total to make. That includes taking and gathering images, uh, building that custom cake board, and then all the sculpting and painting. Speaking of painting, it's time! So to paint this selfie cake, I'm starting with the eyes. I feel like the eyes help bring the cake to life. And that little bit of life I see in the cake gets me excited to keep painting. I'm like, ah, there I am. Nice to meet you, cake me. <laughs> you may wonder what I'm using to paint myself. I have a few techniques. So the first is gel food color diluted with water. So the fat and modeling chocolate doesn't like the water. So think of water and oil, you know, they separate. So when I brush the water-based gel food color onto the chocolate sculpture, the food color beads up. And that is no good. We want a nice smooth stroke of color. The good news is, if you keep brushing, the water that's in the food color will eventually evaporate and you will get a smooth brush stroke. I swear it works. It just takes a little finesse. Another way I paint is to use gel food color, but rather than water, I dilute it with super strong clear alcohol or clear extract like a lemon extract. So this option will spread the food color evenly and thin because the alcohol is so strong that it evaporates super quickly, leaving the food color behind. Most people like to use alcohol rather than water when they're painting on modeling chocolate because it is slightly easier, but I like to dip my toe in both worlds. A little bit of water, a little bit of alcohol. 
Painting the makeup onto my cake face is odd. So I paint makeup on my real face a couple times a week. So it's very familiar. So yeah, it was super strange. <laughs> Especially the eyeliner. It went from Natalie waking up in the morning to Natalie ready to hit the town. <laughs> So within the past few years, I started using these long bristled paint brushes. And I have to say, I absolutely love them. They're great for painting details, and I like the control I have while using them. So you can see that these thin brush strokes are super clear when I start painting in those eyebrows. And all that's left is to paint my hair and even out the color a little bit. By the way, I want to thank you all for suggesting I make this selfie cake. I learned a lot while making it, so you helped make me a better decorator. But you always have the best ideas. It's so fun. And there you have it, a selfie cake of myself. <laughs> I am often asked what the weirdest cake I've ever made is, and I officially have a new answer. It's this cake. This cake is so strange and I absolutely love it. <laughs> Let's get even more weird and cut the cake. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do it now. I post a new cake every Monday. <laughs>